Now, our database schema is actually really straightforward. And one of the main reasons for this is that when we use upload care, we upload an image, we generate a hash to represent an image that we upload, and then we store the upload care URL. Now from this upload care URL, we can go ahead and resize an image. We can add filters to our image. We can do whatever we want. But of course, we'll look at that a little bit later. Let's get the schema set up here. So I already have a database created called Awesome Image, but I want to create a table within this database and I'm just gonna call that Images. So the software that I use has already created an auto incrementing ID. This is an integer, has a length of 11, but you can reduce this. It's unsigned, it's the primary key, and most importantly, it's an auto increment. So now we can start to add the other things that we need. So we have a hash, which we're gonna be randomly generating and we want to um, not allow null for this. Now the same for the URL, this is a var chart of 255, and again, we don't want to allow null. This is going to be the upload care URL. Now optionally, what you can do is store the created at date. What this will allow us to do is just see when an image has been uploaded, so you might find uh, that this is useful. So now that we have this done, what we don't want to do is be messing around with arrays of data. What we want to do is create an image model to represent each row of our database. So what we're gonna be doing in this part, we're gonna be setting up our model, which is really straightforward. We're going to be installing Doctrine DBAL, which is a uh, database abstraction layer for PDO. Sounds complicated, but trust me, it's very straightforward. And we're gonna be just testing, pulling back a couple of records. So first of all, go ahead and just create a couple of uh, records in here. So it doesn't really matter what we do. So we can just say DEF here. As long as we have a couple to play with, uh, we can see uh, and get this all working. So the first thing to do then is install uh, DBAL. And this is basically an abstraction layer for PDO. If you've worked with PDO, this will be very familiar for you. It just means that it works a little bit better and uh, is a little bit easier to work with. So we can pull this in using Composer. So we say Doctrine DBAL, and we go ahead and install that. And now that's done, again, Silex will give us a service provider for this. So we can load it in, we can pass in all of our settings, and we can start to use this within our routes and uh, everything works nice and well. So we are going to register this then, and this is a new Silex provider, and it's our Doctrine service provider. And into here, we can pass in our database options. So db.options, and inside of this array, we just give things like the driver, the host, and all of that good stuff. So for the driver then, I'm using MySQL. So for me, this is going to be PDO MySQL. And the host is more than likely either localhost or 127.0.0.1. We have a database name. We know that we have a database set up. It's called Awesome Image. So I can just go ahead and enter that in there. And a username and a password, of course. Mine is root and root, so I can just add these in there. And last but not least, we just have a character encoding for this, which I'm gonna to set to UTF-8. So that is pretty much it. We're connected up to our database. We can start querying now. So we can test this out, but I think first of all, let's just create our model. So the reason that we're doing this is because when we pull back records, we might want to implement uh, some other methods to be able to do things with the data that we have. Uh, if you've worked with PDO before and you fetched objects or fetched rows as a class, you'll know exactly what this does. But if you don't, uh, don't worry, we'll of course be running through uh, how this works. So I have created then a models directory within app. And inside of here, I'm gonna create my image class. So this is just image.php. Now, of course, because we're using PSR for auto loading, we want to use our vendor namespace, which is represented by our app directory. And of course, we're going into models. And we just have a class called image, and that is all we're gonna be doing for this series. So let's uh, pull back some records and represent them by this class. And if you want to add any methods in here, you can go ahead and do that later on if you scale this up. 
So let's test things out then inside of here. How do we perform a query? Or more importantly, how do we perform a prepared statement? That's what we're most interested in here. So we create a variable, say images. To access our database, we say app db, much like we did with app twig. And then we just use methods that we would normally find on PDO, like prepare. So in here, we want to select all columns from the images table. Now, of course, we're using a prepared statement and we don't really need to be doing this, but it's good practice just to go ahead and create prepared statements just in case you pass any data in. And of course, when we store our images, we will be passing data in. So we'll definitely be using a prepared statement. So now that we've run this prepared statement, we can go ahead and fetch all of these images. And to do this, we just say images fetch all, and I'm just overwriting this variable here. And we choose the type that we want to fetch it back by. So this is going to be PDO fetch class. And inside of here, we provide the string, the full namespace to our model or our, or our class. So in this case, it's AI models image. And then we use class to grab the full namespace as a string. So what we can do now is just kill this here, do a var dump on images, and we should see two records represented by that model. And we do. So we've got an array with two items. The first one here is an image object. We have the ID, the hash, the URL, and the created that date from our database. And we have another one here as well. That's the DEF one that we created. So now that we know that we have all this set up, we can go ahead and get rid of this still works as normal. We can leave this in here because we are going to be doing this a little bit later on, but we won't touch this uh, until we've actually started to store images. So we can get rid of these two records in our database. We don't need these. And we have now set up our database. We've created our model. We've tested that everything works and we can move on to pull in upload care to get ready to actually start to upload images.